Hello, and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. Um, I'm your host today, uh, Alex Silvasatter, and my guest is Quan. Quanu Quane. Quanu Quane Carmu. Yes. And he is the author of this uh, book, uh, Witness a Civil War Through the Eyes of a Child. And he is also the executive director and co founder of Save More Kids. Correct. Uh, which is a nonprofit in Liberia and uh, operates there. And you also have come, uh, have elements here in the United States, here at UC Davis, agricultural collaborations and, yeah. and other things. Um, so we're here today to talk about what's going on in Liberia today, what Save More Kids is doing, yeah. and what the future holds. Um, in a previous uh, episode, we discussed the uh, Liberian Civil War and your experiences as a child during that war. And I think just for context for this, uh, during that Civil War, which lasted uh, 10 to 20 years. Well, uh, 14 years. 14 years. 90% um, of uh, the economy in Liberia was destroyed. About half the population, uh, at the time it was around 2 million, so around 1 million people were displaced as a result of the war. Um, hundreds of thousands of people were killed during the Civil War. And uh, currently, Liberia's population is around 4 million, 4.5 million. Yeah. And the majority, 70%, right, of the, yeah. of the people are under the age of 25. So th that's some of the consequences that Liberia is dealing with today as a result of all uh, of the war, the two civil wars. Um, and Save More Kids was founded to address uh, many of these issues. That's correct. And to develop a new future. So could you tell us about Save More Kids? Yes. And what's thank, going thank you for asking again. Thank you for having me on the show. Save More Kids were created based on that promise my mother made in our killing field. Um, and it was created um, to commemorate the struggle of what happened in Liberia, but it also provide a realistic solution to a country that had been devastated by civil war. Um, when we first got into Liberia for uh, Save More Kids, um, little did we know that um, what we were doing would be so paramount to the solutions, um, to drive solutions to problems in Liberia. Um, when we approached Liberia, we approached it not from the outside looking in, but from uh, individuals who understand the struggle of what happened in Liberia. And then, of course, having been fortunate to get education in the United States, to adapt to American living, um, taking all of my development that I took from here, going back to Liberia uh, with, with my passion for humanity, allowed us to be able to see things a little differently. So we were on designing solutions from the out, outside of Liberia, bringing it into Liberia and hoping that it works for Liberians. Mm -hmm. We were designing solution after uh, absorbing this, the crisis of what, what is happening in Liberia. Uh, to be able to find realistic solution to save uh, more kids, to be able to, to mm -hmm. just be able to put in a solution that will be able to help the country in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, and the best way to go about that was uh, save more kids, was mm -hmm. just to be able to find um, that 70% of a population of a little over 4 million is under, is, 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 is under 25 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, that was striking to us, um, and it was something that was right in our face that if the future of Liberia is to hold, we have to invest in the young minds, you know, the individuals that will become the 20 years old, the, the 25 year old um, young adults one day, um, if they are not empowered to be able to, to, to become a solution in the country, then the country will be a dependent country um, mm -hmm. on the rest of the world. And that's very limited to its potential for what is there. So we turn our attention to mentoring kids um, and we first started by opening up an orphanage home um, mm -hmm. um, in memory of my mother for her promise that she made uh, in a killing field in order for us to be able to expand on that promise that she made. Um, we opened up an orphanage home and took in children who had been devastated by the war uh, right mm -hmm. from the beginning. Um, so we took in 44 kids into this home and, and created this environment of empowerment and love on these kids in order to turn them into children who can not only grow beyond their circumstances, but they can become empowered um, and be able to become a solution 
in their environment. Mm -hmm. So over the last um, 10 plus years, a little over 10 years now, we have uh, ran this home effectively um, mm -hmm. and has been able to impact these 44 kids to begin with. Um, the goal is to expand uh, this home. Uh, We're building a bigger facility that's gonna house um, mm -hmm. uh, 68 kids. It's also gonna right. turn into an innovative center where um, the rest of the world can be able to, to descend in this place and impact um, these kids from this middle of this country, mm -hmm. but also send these kids outside, this, be able to, to empower these kids so that one day they can now be able to go into Liberia and become an effective asset of the community. Mm -hmm. So um, from that, from, from the home, we're able to then do a lot of programs. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a lot of initiatives that uh, we, we institute in order to be able to solve the problems around the home. Uh, so education in this home is not like your normal type of education where you just go and sit in class all day. Um, it's really taking the solu taking the, exposing the kids to the problems in the environment and then innovatively aligning them with those issues and growing a passion in their system to be able to solve those issues. So not not pretending that the problems don't exist, but exactly. making sure that they they're, they acknowledge the problems and that they can see that there are solutions to the problem and they can become part of those solutions. Exactly. Right. So a lot of what we're doing now is trying to build um, an academy, mm -hmm. uh, a Save More Kids Impact Academy is what we're calling it. Mm -hmm. And that academy will speed up the, the age limit for education because, you mm -hmm. know, because of the war and the atrocity, uh, many kids start a school um, later in life. So right. you will have a 22-year-old kid sitting in a 10th grade class or a 9th grade class. After having a high, any education, um, most of those kids, their future just look bleak for them because even right. after high school, then trying to go to college and trying to make life, all those years go to waste. So we have an innovative concept uh, to be able to build an academy that combines college and high school together in the same type of year. Mm -hmm. So that a lot of the kids, most of the kids are already mature uh, to be able to handle the multitask um, things that we will introduce to them. Mm -hmm. um, we want to introduce them to trades that they can start learning right from the eighth grade. So mm -hmm. to have eighth grade all the way to 12th grade, five years of experiencing learning those trades. So by the time you get out of 12th grade, you have enough experience, um, almost like a dual type of um, system mm -hmm. where you get a high school curriculum, then you have a college curriculum in the same school. And, and that's one of the ones that you're building right now. Correct? That's the one we're yeah. building right now. And we can use all of the partnerships possible um, with institutions that are passionate about change. Mm -hmm. uh, we're asking them to join us to help us to innovatively build an education system um, mm -hmm. in a society that can speed up progress and be able to have a lot of impact. And uh, one of the other programs that you're doing is also uh, uh, rubber planting rubber trees and yes. creating a sustainable income that can fund these projects and these schools, right? Correct, yes. So one of the things that we started to look at when we got to Liberia, remember when I told you solving problems um, from inside mm -hmm. versus from outside help us to be a lot more effective. We realize that people don't have jobs. So what is the practical notion of trying to give hope to somebody if they can't afford to feed their families? I don't want to be an organization that just feeds people. Right. I want to be an organization that helps people feed themselves. So we started to buy large pieces of land throughout Liberia. The organization mm -hmm. owns somewhere close to 2,000 acres of land mm -hmm. over Liberia. And we decided that since Firestone has been planting rubber in this place for a long time, why don't we start to plant rubber? Mm -hmm. So we have about 200 acres of rubber trees that we've planted over the last five years. Um, and even with that, with those trees that we have planted, we are now innovatively bringing that into the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, it's going to be a part of the curriculum for the Save More Kids Impact Academy, where kids, um, teenagers will start learning about rubber technician, you know, how mm -hmm. do you take care of these trees? Right. Because then when they graduate, if they choose not to go to college, they can go straight and get a job. Right. Um, in, the, in the farm. Or open their own rubber. Oh, planting. open their own rubber yeah. um, planting um, farm and stuff like that too as well. And you're, you're up to, I think it's on the website, it says your goal was uh, 125,000 trees, right? That's right. And you're, you're already at like 40,000 trees. Correct. Steadily going. Yeah. Um, and and we, the projected income from that will support 
a lot of schools uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and the the college, the trade college that you were talking about, sort of the combined, yeah. and also a clinic. It mentioned a clinic. Uh, That's right. So there's enough money from rubber because it's a very critical crop around the world yeah. to support all those activities. Correct. And it grows naturally very in well Liberia. in Liberia. Yeah. And then you're also working with UC Davis, right, to study some other sustainable crops that would uh, provide income and be an alternative to... Uh, yes. So we haven't started working with UC Davis yet. I know right. David have a program right. to work with international um, organizations or even places like, like Liberia where farming can be, um, sustainable farming can be a key thing um, in a place like, like Liberia. Mm -hmm. So as part of our uh, institution that we're building in Liberia, we are creating room for um, schools like Davis, students mm -hmm. from here, to be able to take trips and become part of our impact. Um, right. So as part of the witness experience, um, mm -hmm. the book, we created a book um, so that it become, it's not just a book you read, but it gave you an experience. Um, so that experience lies in Liberia. Mm -hmm. So when you read a book, um, we transport you for the witness experience to Liberia so that you can actually engage in some of the work that we're doing on the ground. Mm -hmm. Not only will you then come um, with our team to Liberia, but you get to experience parts of the book um, and go through what I went through uh, from mm -hmm. a tourism standpoint, but mm -hmm. with a purpose. Um, and then after you, you've landed in Monrovia, we transport you all the way to Banga. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a 10-day trip. And you come to Sugar Hill where uh, my home is, where the home is actually on the, on the, still in the home that I grew up in, Sugar Hill. We turn into this orphanage home. You experience all of this as uh, from an academia perspective, we create a curriculum that, that, that you go by throughout the trip um, but an amazing surprise on top of this hill is you get to discover uh, whether or not my mother made that promise, the promise that she made in a killing field, whether she lived. Uh, you get to mm -hmm. see um, everything in the action. The results of all that from that one promise. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then stemming from all of that, um, you, you as an academic um, institution are involved from an academia perspective on mm -hmm. how do you combine partnerships with a place that desperately need growth and aspiration right. with an organization that's forward thinking obviously about mm -hmm. a lot of this how do you bring that together from from the classroom to another classroom in Liberia mm -hmm. where other students cannot collaborate with right. students here to be able to solve problems right. to so, put your learning and training into effect in into a effect. positive way that's right yeah, yeah. so we one of our, our program manager uh, for save more kids um, did a whole practicum on this so we have a, we have a well-written um, curriculum practicum yeah. that colleges are looking at. Yeah. We've already done some of the witness experience with other schools. The University of San Diego mm -hmm. um, has put this into their curriculum to be able to, to, to start teaching from this next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had schools in Massachusetts that have come on this trip, and students from those trip, from our witness experience trip, took chapter two of the book, which is called Catching Light, and created an entire program called Catching Light. Um, based on that. Based on my father bringing electricity to the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, these students are now providing electricity to impoverished communities around Liberia mm -hmm. as a result of coming on the trip to Liberia. Wow. So. And electricity is one of the things that Liberia needs more of, right? Yes, solar. 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 Yeah. So that uh, sort of, with, let's leave off on, on the future. Yes. What do you think is going to, for the next 10 li years of Liberia, what's, what are the, sort of the main goals you think the country needs to achieve? That's not, a not just with the kids program, but in general. That's a great question. Um, the next 10 years of Liberia, if I could imagine mm -hmm. um, it being a great, perfect 10 years, um, I would imagine an open door where the word is invited to Liberia mm -hmm. to be part of impact. Um, we desperately want um, innovators um, mm -hmm. from the classroom to individuals that are retired to take another look at Liberia, but come with an organization like myself. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we have the foundation already laid in place where if you feel like you are at a place where your skill set is just dormant, mm -hmm. we can put it to use and it will make you feel like you are living again. 
um, in a whole nother way. So uh, it's not only that Liberia is calling you, mm -hmm. but you will be transformed as a result of feeling like you are needed in a place and, and mm -hmm. that you will fall in love with Liberia in ways that I can't even put into words. Um, so I think the next 10 years has to, our tourism um, in Liberia has to improve. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, infrastructure, building infrastructure, mm -hmm. the educational sector in Liberia. We, we have to take an innovative approach to education in Liberia. Mm -hmm. We can't go about it like a normal society. Right. You know, our crises are way bigger than ever. Um, so you can't solve problems the same way it was created. So we have to take an innovative way of solving problems uh, for education, healthcare, right. um, just about everything that, that from a, that's why I love students, because from a student perspective, they're in it to learn. They're in it right. to, to give something. So if Liberia was um, on a plate, on a, uh, you know, if it was a canvas, how can we paint it? Um, together in order to, to build a future in the, in, in, in the place and be able to transform life for a long time. Excellent. So, That's a great, a, a great way to, to, I think, leave off on Liberia. Yeah. Had rough past and, a, and, and yeah. it's all about the future now. That's right. And all we, right. We're moving ahead strong and I would just like to say one more thing. Sure. Savemorekids.org. Um, yep. Go to our website. Find out more. Um, the witness experience is on there, so just look for witness experience. Yes. Sign up. Um, you know, get more information about what we are doing. Of course, the book you can find on yeah. Amazon. Uh, you can go to witnesslibiria.com and it will come up um, and um, and start the experience. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us and sharing your experience. And uh, again, I recommend the book. I've read it. It's a fantastic book, and I think it will open your eyes to a whole new experience. And that's it.